Welcome to week 32 of Esper's Refit, and in Liz's absence, I have a new camera lady, Julie. Ah, uh, very nice meeting you all. <laughs> Monday morning, and uh, we've hit the deck running. And when I say hit the deck running, I mean literally, because today we're starting to put the deck fittings in. Uh, the first thing we've done is with Task Pong, uh, we're making us uh, little platforms for our new fair leads to sit on. If you remember, we've decided to replace the fair leads because they're now no longer uh, intrinsic to the tow rail because there is no tow rail where the fair leads sit. So we have to raise these off the deck. So Pong is going to make one inch thick uh, platforms for these to sit on. Obviously, we'll shape it all nicely. Um, and we've got six of these to mount. If we go up on deck, we'll have a look at what we're doing with the deck fittings. Well, thank God for digital photography. Uh, before we took all the deck fittings off, we had the foresight, of course, to photograph every single fitting. On top of that, Ton and Tui, who removed the deck fittings, have labelled every single one. So these, for example, uh, labelled one to six, working from the front to the back, and obviously port and starb as well. So if you look down here, it gives us a good idea of what uh, goes where. As you can see, being the overrig uh, catch that Esper is, we have a lot of deck fittings. So obviously we need to make sure that we have them in the, uh, the right place. This jammer here, uh, this is uh, raised off the deck. As you can see, this wood is very old. It's done well, 25 years, but uh, we'll replace that with a new, uh, a new mounting. So, what happens now? Now that we know where the deck fittings are going, uh, according to our photographs, we need to check uh, from the underside that the uh, corresponding holes are there. So the next job, uh, which I've tasked Moo with, is to go around the boat uh, with a small drill bit and find the holes and drill a lead line up from underneath. So if we go and look up in the uh, anchor locker, we can see Moo uh, doing that now. So we can see Moo drilling that lead line there from underneath. And then at least we know where that front one will go. And if he does one more here, then obviously the other two should correspond. And since we're up the, at the front of the boat, I'll just point out that the new fair leads are going to sit up here. Now previously, the tow rail used to run all the way up and we had uh, built-in fair leads into the tow rail. Well, there's no tow rail there anymore. So the fair leads are going to stand on their own, mounted on that one inch uh, teak platform. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tea lady. It's all go on Esper today, and uh, Tui started off by making a bit of an error. We're putting the handles on our uh, cupboard doors, so we're mounting them like so. And because we've got four sliding doors, they have to be mounted in a certain way. And you've mounted that one there, which meant you wouldn't be able to open that door. So uh, fortunately we've been able to swap them over, turn them around. It does mean there's a little gap down there which is mildly annoying, but uh, it saves having to resurface. We have a new electrician on board with us called Bam, who's been working on cutting this bit of uh, plastic around the, uh, the new breakers, which are here, and these are the old ones. So that's been fitted already, and I think Bam's up here. What are you doing up there? Make the hole for the BNG, I'll go for What have you done today? Uh, make the the 
electric panel mm -hmm. and uh, jump the main everything inside. Little glimpse of the electrics here. Our panel is slowly uh, coming together and uh, we've got the breakers here and on this the middle door is the stereo and unfortunately it was cut a little bit too close so I've had to cut out a channel here. Now that may seem rather ugly but actually as it happens what I was planning to do was to put holes in here anyway to allow better air circulation so that the, uh, the electronic components can cool down quicker and easier so it's no bad thing of course we still have to put in shelves to house the um, uh, inverters the little inverters that will be running hard drives and uh, the computer the 12 volt computer has to go in there as well on the shelf so still quite a bit to do so this is Ton fitting up the uh, doors. We've had to do a bit of juggling around, haven't we, Ton? Because this I wanted here doesn't fit because of the hinges. So we'll just move it over to this side, battery monitor there. I'm talking of batteries and wiring. We've got power at this end. What are the cables you're checking now? For the that anchor win? For the anchor winch, and, yeah. Uh, how, how so he's at one end, and down the other end. We got Dean. I think checking to see that there is a, a connection. The carpenters have almost finished their work on Esper. Pong finishes off various fittings, like the windlass base, which is an inch and a half solid teak strip, and also the handles for the new teak floorboards. This is why if you work in a boatyard you need a pickup truck. Yep, this is our swimming platform and we decided that it's the wrong size. No one's fault other than the guys that bent it in Hattiai. So what they did was they bent it not taking into account the bar itself which they've now drawn in so they understand where it bends. So we're here in a very wet Hattiai having just dropped Liz off at the airport and we're now in the town centre. Here comes Moo with our swimming platform we are now in the machine shop in town where they'll bend it into the right shape. It's pretty industrial looking this place. No. <laughs> He's telling me to turn it off. Well, I found somewhere where I can record without being told off, and that's back in PSS in Chebelang. And here we are with our swimming platform, which we had to bring back. Uh, the problem that we've got is that it's too wide, and the machine shop in uh, Hattiai said that they weren't able to bend it any further. So, what we're going to try and do is to cut a section out. So, we'll cut this out and we'll weld it together. And hopefully that will bring the width of the swimming platform in a bit closer. We have one other problem though. This is the other problem. This is our Pacific Plus wind pilot which we're refitting onto the transom. And this is going to dictate the, uh, the length and the width of the swimming platform because it's actually going to rest on this strut here as well as go through. So the important thing is to get the angle of the Pacific Plus correct so that this is at a 10 degree angle. So we're just trying to uh, get the right measurement before we can fit the swimming platform. The problem is, is that the boat is not sitting straight. The boat is sitting at an angle. So we have to work out when the boat's straight what 10 degrees is to the vertical. So that's the other problem we're having. We're getting new struts made for the legs here 
and we have to keep cutting them down, cutting them down until eventually we get the right length so that we can mount it on the transom and then we can do the swimming platform. You've met Mr Hammock before. He heads up the metal workshop at PSS and is another boon to the workforce there. He just has a natural instinct for problem solving with anything to do with metal. And if you were wondering why we refer to him as Mr Hammock, uh, I'll explain this in a minute. You probably can't see, but there's a whole load of uh, dust coming out of our uh, lazarette water drain. And that's because Moo is inside rectifying a rather stupid mistake. What's happened, Moo? <laughs> Can you explain? <laughs> the reason why Moo's looking sheepish, and it's not his fault, but this is what's happened. We've managed to drill through the lazarette uh, water pipe. And that's exactly where our, uh, our, our feet for the wind pilot sit, and the three bolts. So uh, Moose had to cut out a little gap. Now I should explain in our defence that we spent hours aligning the wind pilot, and those lower legs were in the optimal position for the swim platform. In six months this is our first cock up. Still, that's why we're documenting our errors. We make the mistakes so you don't have to. Okay, with the deck fittings, what we're doing is we're going to refit them. As you can see, these holes have got quite wide, and uh, we're checking that the cavity inside isn't too wet. So what we're doing is we're uh, using a drill with a little bit of an Allen key on the end to drill round inside here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to tape it up from the underside, fill it with epoxy, re-drill the hole, and then we're going to. Um, uh, counter sink just around the edge here so that when we put the Sikaflex in there will be enough of a, uh, a seal around the hole uh, to make that watertight. And obviously these take a lot of strain so over the years they've moved. So Moo is going to uh, uh, fill these up with epoxy this afternoon. That's the one o'clock start and here's Moo so he's going to start working. The reason for this exercise is to clear the cavity of any loose core. The epoxy is mixed with chopped fibreglass mat and mixed to a thick consistency. This should fill and plug the hole whilst providing the strength around the deck fitting to prevent it from moving in the future. Whilst the boatyard moves uh, boats around to get various vessels in and out of the water, I've been told to go and check out our new swimming platform because they've cut it to size. So let's go and see what uh, Yuma's up to. If you remember, he's cut it down the centre at two points and he's uh, welded it back together. So here he is. Despite the curvature of the platform, Jung was able to cut and weld the two pieces effectively.
it would take a keen eye to know that the platform is now made up of these two pieces instead of the original one piece. Yum used argon as the shielding gas, which he sent down inside the tube via plugs at the ends of the pipe. We've said before how PSS has a great reputation for its stainless work. Master welder Yun is about to prove this with our swimming platform. After grinding away the excess weld, he then spends time polishing the join. By the time he has finished, the join is non-existent. It is so polished that the well-groomed Mr. Gon finds other uses for it.